Hi, in this video I will be demonstrating how I troubleshoot a faulty PIR. Now this is an uncommon fault that I've found and I just would like to make a video to show you what you may encounter right now. This is the Optex Indoor PIR. It is the RXCST. Right, so I'm just going to open these covers and uh, over here I've got a slightly different one, although it is functioning in the same way as these two. So these three are optics, and this one over here is another brand called IDS, and I've got this here for a specific reason. These two green ones over here are faulty. I'm going to demonstrate how I know they're faulty, and then I'm going to explain why I find this particular one better, and the main reason is because it uses a relay. These two seem to be solid state devices, while this one over here has a relay driven output stage. And I'll show you why I prefer that. Right, now let me just explain what's going on here. I've got an alarm panel. I'm just getting the positive and negative from the alarm panel. So each one of these PRRs has a positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative. So I have four PRRs connected. These two are faulty. This one is working, this one is working. I'm gonna show you some of the measurements when I use my multimeter. Right, starting with this one. This one is working, and I'll quickly show you. Right, now over here, I've got the positive and negative, and then I've got the NC, the normally closed contacts. Now, what is supposed to happen is it's supposed to be a closed circuit all the time, and when this LED is on, telling me that there has been a violation or the infrared sensor has picked up motion, then it will be an open circuit. So I'm gonna put my meter here, Right, I've remained still. The meter is buzzing, telling me it's a short circuit because I'm measuring continuity. This is a short circuit. So if it buzzes, it tells me it's a very low impedance path. And also it shows me the resistance is very low because if I go to the resistance, there the resistance is uh, less than 10 ohms. Right, so I'm going back to continuity and notice when I move, it becomes an open circuit. Once I stay still, it becomes a closed circuit, right? So that's the functionality of the PIR. Notice I move, it becomes an open circuit. Now, what is very important with a PIR, with an alarm sensor, is that the output stage over here is isolated from the positive and negative. So what I mean by that is as follows. Quickly having a look at this diagram. Over here, this is the entire PIR sensor. That's the sensor, right? So we're going to use the normally closed. So we normally connect our wires to the normally closed, and then we need to give the sensor power. There's our positive wire and there's our negative wire. So if I bring the sensor here, this is the normal connections, positive and negative, and then the normally closed connection. Yes, some people use the tamper, but I'm not going to go into that for now. I'm just going to show the principle of operation. So we give the sensor power, the 12 volts and zero, and it activates and powers up the controller. The, and the PRR over here is there to detect motion. When there is motion, it opens this connection because normally closed looks like this. It is normally closed and then when you operate it, it opens. So it goes from normally closed to open. So what happens here is this relay over here, this would be a miniature relay. The normally closed is closed like that. So it would be closed, current could flow. And that is why we heard the beeping sound on the meter. And when there's motion, it initiates a current in the coil. The coil attracts the contacts away, therefore open circuiting the output stage, therefore the normally closed becomes open. Now the important thing here is it's isolated. The normally closed terminals over here are completely isolated from the positive voltage here and the zero volts over here. That means if I took my meter and try to measure between there and there, it should be an open circuit. If I try to measure between there and there, open circuit, and there and there should also be an open circuit because it's galvanically isolated. So over here, I've got a relay. There's the coil side. When the coil operates, it opens or closes these contacts. These contacts here have no connectivity to the coil over here. If there's a fault on the coil side, maybe there was a lightning strike and the coil blew up, and maybe there was a surge and the coil destroyed itself, it would have no impact on the voltage here. The output stager would still 
have the same voltage based on the circuit connected to these contacts. So it doesn't matter if there's a surge on this side, the surge cannot be transferred to this side because it is galvanically isolated. So this is the traditional form of the PIR using the relay. There's the coil. When current flows there, it opens the contacts, therefore making the normally closed become a open circuit. Right, now I've brought this sensor here to demonstrate it. There's the positive and negative, and the normally closed is sitting here on these two terminals. Notice it is a short circuit, and when I move in front of the sensor, it becomes an open circuit, and that blue LED goes on. Notice I move my finger again, the blue LED will pick me up, and my meter is open circuit. Now what's extremely important is this. I'm going to put my meter there, and I'm going to put my meter on the negative. Notice the meter is saying offline. There is no connectivity between any of these connections. So the positive and negative does not touch the normally closed. And if I go to the other side of the normally closed, notice that even if the sensor operates, it is isolated. And the same is true for this Optex one. If I put my lead over there and my other lead over there, notice there is no connectivity. Over there, no connectivity. Even if I put on the negative, no connectivity and no voltage and over there no connectivity and no voltage so this is working correctly it has isolated the output stage there the normally closed terminals this is working correctly it has isolated the output stage the normally closed terminals there and i'll quickly show you one last thing before i show you the faulty two units that that is the miniature relay i referred to and you should even be able to hear it if you put your ear right there you can hear it going tick tick when it opens and closes and i'm going to put the microphone there and maybe we can hear it okay so it's a very small relay so it has a very small sound right now let's look at these two faulty units okay positive negative positive negative normally closed normally closed so i'm working with these two terminals so i'm going to put my leads across there notice the meter it says offline and notice the sense has operated and when I put my finger there it has operated and now it should be a normally closed. So we can see that these uh, terminals are not working at all. Right now let's have a look at this one. Notice it's not closing that. It's become an open circuit. So effectively that should mean my alarm would say these zones are open circuited. But why it's a problem is as follows. I'm now going to measure across from the normally closed to the positive and negative. So I'm going from there to there. Notice that voltage there, 10.7 volts. And if I go to the negative, 0.1 volt. So there is a voltage between there and there, 10.7 volts. And let's look at this one, 11 volts. And between that terminal and that terminal, Look at that, there is some voltage there, although very low. So what has happened is this has broken down the insulation between the positive and one of the wires here on the output stage. Now why that's a problem is because when you connect it to your alarm, we'll now be able to send current into the unit. So why that's a problem is current can actually flow out of the unit and into the unit to your alarm. So it's now a faulty sensor. Why it particularly bothers me is because it's supposed to be isolated. So if this unit went faulty, like they're both faulty, it shouldn't interfere with the output stage. The output stage should just go dead. I should not be able to see a voltage across the output stage to the positive. For example, if I show you the working sensors, here I have the working sensors. I'm going to put my lead over there Notice there's no volt drop across here because it is galvanically isolated. It doesn't matter which way I put my leads. Uh, it really doesn't matter because there is no voltage here. And even on this one, the Optex, which is working, there should be no voltage across any of these terminals. And that is how it is supposed to work. So that means that this type of unit is not using a mechanical switch. 
it is using probably a solid state switch and because of a surge, a voltage surge which took place on the uh, input terminal over there, the positive, it actually destroyed the output stage. It shouldn't have done that because that also implies that if I have a surge, it might even go back into my alarm system and damage my my zones, although that did not happen. I cannot stand by that claim, I'm just speculating. Because if I flip these around, we don't see a relay. This seems to be a solid state design. Well, if you have a look at this one, you can definitely see the relay there. This was a very difficult fault to trace because even if you look at the sensors, it looks like they're working. If you measure at the alarm panel, there is a voltage present. And because there's a voltage present, one doesn't think the sensor's faulty. But in this case, the sensor was faulty. So I hope that was helpful in your alarm installations. Thanks for watching and cheers.